Hello everybody and welcome to my build video for Magic and Nightblade. Now I know it has been a very very long time since I've made a video. I've had personal issues, um, I lost somebody very close to me and then I had a dead PC which has caused me even further struggle and I've been studying at university and to be honest I've not been particularly motivated because pretty much every time I upload a build video I just get slated for it anyway. So long story short it didn't really make much sense but I have been requested to make one. I have not really seen any decent Magic Blade build videos videos out there and I've been playing a pretty successful build on and off for a number of patches now and this is the version that is for this patch. So this build essentially is focused on enormous incoming healing as a way of mitigating damage. It uses no invisible cloak and that is how we're going to survive. Stacking this huge huge incoming heals with a low potion cooldown on vitality which we'll cover in a sec. One a very, very important thing is you must be an Argonian for this build to work. I can't clarify that clearly enough because if you're not, it will not work. You will not have enough sustain. So it's worth buying a race change to make this work. That being said, do double consider that because next patch, you're almost definitely just not going to want to bother with healing and just stack shields because healing gets absolutely gutted and it may not really have much use at all. But we'll see. I've not tested this on the PTS. I don't have the PTS. But let's go over the build. First things first, our sets are as follows. Ignore the skills for now. We'll get onto that in a sec. Two Zahn. This is a monstrously high damaging monster set. This is all in pen, by the way. Just to clarify, it is a proc damage set. And you need a proc damage set as a Magic Blade to get kills. It is very difficult to kill good players, to clarify, without having some sort of proc offensive set. Zahn, Scoria... Or this new set that I can't remember the name of. I did try it, didn't really like it. But you're going to need something like that. Otherwise, you're just really going to struggle to kill tankier targets. Because the burst on Magic Blade is particularly predictable. It's extremely obvious. Your ult has a cast time. And Merciless, which is your other big damaging skill, has kind of a cast time in a sense. It's, it's still very avoidable, even after a CC. So it's pretty much impossible to land them both. You're going to need something else. Zahn is my choice. Five Alchemists. This goes on the front bar only. We are using one heavy, one medium, five light. Um, the heavy is on the body to get maximum stats. And we have Magicka Glyph, Magicka Glyph, Triglyph on the bigs. Triglyph, 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 Triglyph. So we're running two big Magicka Glyphs. Everything else is Triglyph. That gives us a 33k magic ball. Our back bar then is Warlock. This is a very juicy sustain set. Um, yes, this is better than Lich for anybody who's going to ask that. But if you do have a strange preference for Lich, feel free to use that instead. It's not the end of the world. It's pretty close. And if you don't want to farm Warlock, it's essentially going to do the same job. The reason Alchemist is so good in this build is going to come down to our Jewelry Glyphs then. We are running three Potion Cooldown Glyphs infused. We have a 21 second cooldown on our pots. And with Alchemist, we have 20 second uptime on big spell damage buff. So although our max spell damage is only sitting at 1.6k we're getting this huge surge of spell damage from alchemist buffed with NHP, we're sitting at 2.8k spell damage so that is a solid spell damage yes we're lower on magic than some builds we're on argonian it kind of comes with water you could get this higher to clarify you could easily change your mundus which is currently the atro i'll get to that in a sec to the mage or apprentice if you wish you probably could sustain that I'm mostly playing open world on OCP, so I do like the extra sustain, but it definitely is sustainable without it. Uh, lastly, our weapon glyphs, we're running shock infused on the front bar with a fire staff. And the back bar, I really, really like powered because we're going to run a burst heal on here since our healing is so high already. And because our heal is so high and powered ticks in as the last scaling of that calculation, we actually get a really good buff from this. So it's well worth using. You could use any glyph on the back. Some people might like weapon and spell damage. I still really like this Magicka Steel glyph. I've kind of always favoured that on the back bar. Um, but each to their own. This is a pretty flexible glyph. Use what you so wish. Our stats are as follows. I've obviously said the spell damage is 2.8k buffed. But yeah, you know that. By the way, that's buffed without any cheese like a glyph. So you could obviously get way higher. Magicka 33k. It's enough. Health very high. Sitting at 30k. And stamina just under 17k. Magic recovery 1.6 and our crit resist at 3k. Resistances are fairly low, we're in light, and I just realized I missed one final set, two potentate. That's giving us mitigation. This is also flexible if you were gonna run against less people, or you're very, very confident with your kiting skills, or you're gonna engage in a group play. Change that to willpower, probably. Uh, you could go for other sets. Endurance is another good mitigation set, since we're getting good healing from our 
Health, not bad at all. It's actually pretty close to potentate in how it calculates, but I like to take less damage since we're in light with low resistance. Uh, as I said, we're not a vampire, but we are running the Atro Mundus currently. You could change that to Mage or Apprentice if you wish at no extra cost. And our food is the Gold Tri Food. Use the cheaper one if you need. Doesn't matter too much. Vamp is not worth it. I really do not suggest it. Our skills, pretty generic skill bar. We're running Entropy on the front bar to generation for Major Sorcery. Funnel is our spam ball. The tooltip on that, obviously pretty low right now because we are not remotely buffed and Alchemist is most of our damage. But that is going to be sitting somewhere around the 8.6 to 8.8k mark, which is more than enough. Can get higher tooltips in other builds? Yes, you're not going to survive. Maybe with an Invis Cloak build, but those just don't get kills at the moment. And Cloak Invis is really, really buggy. So I like going for a slightly lower tooltip, balancing it out and getting the kill the harder way. Elemental Drain for sustain and penetration, pretty much mandatory. If you do decide to go for Scoria for your monster set, I would recommend taking this morph here, Minor Magic Kill Debilitate with the dot and putting that there instead. I much prefer Elemental Drain, I think it adds to your burst far more, but this is not a bad skill and it is going to give you that dot to help Scoria and then you'd also slot on Double Damage Poison's front bar. Um, but yeah, it kind of comes up to you that. Fourth is Merciless. This is your main burst skill, gives us mitigation. Read the tooltip if you don't understand what it does, but this is going to be your key. Five light attacks, launch that big boy damage. Preferably we're using that when we're ulting, after the ult just to get a 20% buff, or when Zahn is up, most preferably both. Fear is our CC. Now this is actually much better defensively than offensively. I don't really like it offensively now that our ult has a cast time, pretty hard to hit it, and Merciless has a duration to reach them. Very, very short, but it's still enough for them to break and dodge. So if you do want a more offensive CC, you could take reach, it's kind of shit, but it does do the job. Um, I prefer fear, I like a defensive CC, I use this a lot if I'm zerged down to break up the group and then kite away. I normally use that before image, I think it's worth it. But another big thing about this is it gives max health. So this does obviously help balance our health out. Lastly, Soul Harvester's Yolt. You could also use Incap here. Both have their merits. Offensively, against some targets, the CC on 120 cast of Incap Strike is very useful. And the extra stamina magic sustain is very noticeable on that. However, I like the Defile at the moment. I did test both over the past few streams. And I really much prefer the Defile against some targets. Healing is more of a problem against especially Zahn than your burst potential, and I think that's the way to go. But both are good. Go with your preference. Do not underestimate Incap. I suggest trying them yourself. Image, mandatory, kite skill, minor maim. It's got the lot. Pretty damn good skill. Rapid regen. This is completely broken. If you do run in a group, you might want to look at taking the other morph. But yeah, this is such a broken skill. They should have nerfed this, not healing as a whole. Obviously, they didn't. This is a Xenomax to grab the sledgehammer and break it down. But hey, they've done it, whatever. Rapid regen, mandatory skill, so strong. I'm gonna skip the next for now. Dark Cloak is another hot. This scales off our max health. We've got an enormous tooltip on here, and we're gonna show how much we're getting this up in a sec. And siphoning attacks, big sustain source, nice healing. You could change this, potentially feel a snare remove, which we do not currently have. I would recommend taking Phantasmal Escape. This gives us uh, Major Evasion, which is a very good buff instead of going for race against time it's a longer snare move the crit damage does not matter that much it's good but it's not going to make a huge difference and the evasion is way better in my opinion but yeah i, I think that sustain from siphoning attacks was really good i tested it literally an hour ago and i favor this dramatically but if you do prefer playing with a snare move this is the skill you've got to change off and when you do that you take off rest of life giver is the morph you want to choose and put your siphoning ult there because that is going to give you your siphoning skill on the back bar for your 8% max magicka. Final skill then is Blessing of Restoration. This is our burst heal. We get a really, really nice tooltip on this. This is over 10k buffed because we are running a lot of stuff to increase the healing. That's solid healing. It's not easy to get a good heal as a burst on Magic Knight Blade. And somehow we have achieved it. Now the reason we're getting such good value from our pots is that we're using a particularly strong potion combination. We are not using tripod, spell power, or anything like that. We are using this one here, Essence of Speed. Major Expedition 15.7, Lingering Health 17.2, and Vitality 15.7. We have a super high uptime on this, somewhere around 70% because of these low potion cooldowns, and these are very, very strong effects. Do not underestimate the power of these. 
this is what gives you most of the offensive capabilities of this. But you have another important pot to run. If you come against a stand light blade, roller blade, or a mouse blade that sits in cloak all day, or somebody hides, you want this one. He says finding it. Here. Detection, immovability, and max magicka. So if you run low on magicka and you're desperate, pop this one as well. Gives you some sustain back. But you're mostly using that to avoid roller blades uh, that are sitting in cloak all day because now we can see them and we've got a really high uptime on that as well. I think that covers everything. Knowing me, it hasn't. Um, it hasn't. We need to cover CP fit quickly. So CP, I'm going to fire through these. Just copy them. I've tested a fair bit. I'll just match them, but feel free to adjust if you so wish. One in Siphoner, that lowers their sustain, but more importantly, they've got to purge that before any other negative effects like Elemental Drain. 81 for Break Free and Warlord. 9 in Bashing for Interrupting. 7 in Mooncalf Stamina. Sustain much as possible in Arcanist because we're running low sustain. Pretty much it's the only useful green tree. 75 there for 14%. 11 in Tenacity for Heavy Attacks. If we do that, we're doing it on the Resto Staff Bar. 66 for Roll Dodge. 20 in Shadow Ward if we do really need to block a high burst combo. Blue Tree, 27 in Blessed for this high healing. Amp up even more. 56 in Crit Damage. 56 Elemental Damage. 50 in Pen. And 72 in Direct. 9 in Staff Expert. Again, don't underestimate the value of this. And this also unlocks 75 in Butcher, which is kind of worth it. Not huge, but it does help a little bit. And then my pretty generic setup for Red Tree that I've been running on most classes for a solid amount of time. 72 in Ironclad for direct damage, 48 in Crit Resist, 28 in Dot Reduce, 49 in Hardy, 43 in Elemental Defender. This unlocks Unchained if it matters. This unlocks Reinforced if it matters. And then finally, this one here, 3 into Expert Defender for Light Attacks and 27 in Crit Recovery. Wouldn't change the Red Tree to save my life. If you prefer a different blue and green setup, feel free. But I hope the build video will be useful for some people before this patch ends. It's particularly strong. If you lack gold, there is a cheaper version of this pot. It only uses Lingering and Vitality. It drops Expedition. You'll need to slot Race Against Time in that slot that I've said instead of Siphoning Attacks. Um, but it will give you some sort of accessibility to it then. It's much cheaper. This pot's particularly expensive in East Mother of Pearl. So if you are a poorer player, that will sort you out. I hope this will be useful for some people. I hope you enjoy the build. Please don't slate me too much. I promise you this is good. Feel free to catch me on stream because I'm live more often again now that it's the summer holidays and I'm hoping to fix my old PC and slowly get back together with my wife. Hope the world works out and I'll